Nick comes through that door, there's gonna be hell to pay because I'm in the middle of the take and I'm. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Do you hear that? That's all camera now. Three, two, one, bro. What's up, everybody? My name is Michael Lee Murphy, and the reality of filming is that it's awkward as hell. So I'm going to sit all slumped over like I'm a cool kid in class who just uh, cut his P.E. to go smoke cigarettes in front of the gym. <sighs> Let's talk about this shelf right here. This is the section of games we're going to be talking about. I honestly don't know if I'm touching the right part. We're touching the right part. We're going to be talking about all the games up in here. And let's get at it. The first game is Mystic Veil by AEG Games. <clears throat> this is a, uh, an interesting game. It is a card crafting game. So there are a bunch of sleeved cards. And throughout the game, uh, like you would in a deck builder, you're trying to acquire better cards. But this game, you'll only ever have, I think it's 20 cards that'll ever be the number you have, and you're going to craft cards, meaning you're gonna slide extra abilities and things uh, onto already existing cards to give them more abilities, more things you can do, but you never have a larger deck, you just have a better deck. Um, it's a really interesting game in terms of the concept of it. Um, it it's kind of been talked about, this. it was kind of like, this game was created just so people could get used to the idea of card crafting, but ultimately this was never going to be like the game they want people to associate with card crafting. Not that they're ashamed of it or anything like that, but uh, it's just an interesting game where it's like, there will be better games in the future, but this isn't the idea in the meantime. Uh, but Mystic Veil is fun. It is an interesting uh, new thing that we have in a game that's card crafting. Uh, and I do like playing it once in a while. It's just not a game we'll play all too often. We did stream it recently and it was really great. It's fun. Uh, that's Mystic Veil. Vale. Continuing down the M's, not that this is at all uh, alphabetized, we have Magic Maz. And that's why I hate tins. Magic Maz! You play it, it's fun. You go through Ma as your little dwarf person or a thief and you, uh, uh, you're going through this mall trying to steal stuff. It's a cooperative game. It's a real-time game in that you have this uh, ever-dwindling amount of time via sand timer. Uh, and it's a really fun game because you have to negotiate these little meeples around and get them around the mall. But if you have four players, you only can control one of the cardinal directions. I can only make meeples move down. Uh, Joe Schmo can only make people move left and so forth. And we have to be able to communicate all this without talking. So basically you need to be paying attention because you're gonna move the various little thieves around, not just one, and you can only move them when it's time to go left. So you have to kind of like signal to each other like, mm, I need you to go bro. But you can only slap this little red meeple down as like a hammer saying like, pay attention. But then you can't say pay attention to what? You just have to, get them to hopefully notice. So it's a really fun game. It's really chaotic and crazy. There's all these different uh, scenarios and things that basically add layers of difficulty and Magic Maze will just make you giggle. It'll freak you out, it'll stress you out, but it's in a good way. Uh, really love Magic Maze, a lot of fun. Uh, speaking of the tin from hell, sushi go party? You're gonna take your sushi and you know what I always wanna do when I'm eating sushi is I wanna freaking party, dude. So uh, sushi goes party, we put into bags, but I just want to show you because that's how terrible this tin is. Literally, if you don't have them bags, that right there, what you saw happen, will explode the cards in here. They will be as shuffled up as you could possibly uh, make them. Sushi Go Party is a drafting game. Uh, it's a game where you have various adorable little sushi. Uh, you have things like edamame, and you have uh, mar uh, 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 maki and it, uh, miso soup. It's funny, I love sushi. <laughs> I can't think of a single name of a single thing. Nigiri, boom, nailed it. Um, and you're trying to get different sets of cards, basically. So you wanna have, depending on the type of sushi you have, and there's various options in Sushi Go Party, which is why Sushi Go Party is great. Um, you might need, uh, for every two tempura you have, you'll get five points. You're gonna try to get pairs of tempura, but you can only choose one card to play at a time, you put it face up, and then you pass your hand to the left or whatever direction you happen to be going in that round. So everyone sees what you're going for and people are then gonna to try to deny you the things that you want. Uh, super fun, super light. It goes down super easily because it's just adorable as all get out. 
Uh, I recommend this game for anybody. If it's like the first game they're playing, throw down on Sushi Go Party. They will enjoy it, and then maybe you can be like, and now here's TI4. Uh, Sushi Go Party, a lot of fun. Um, this is Big Trouble on Little China Legendary. So it's a deck building game. It is in the same universe as Marvel Legendary. You can play this with all of your Marvel Legendary stuff. Um, it's just Big Trouble in Little China themed. Of all the themes, it's Big Trouble in Little China. And it uh, this was made because the designers uh, and people over at Upper Deck really love Big Trouble in Little China, to which I say, uh, duh, you frickin' better. That's how we weed out the bad people. Uh, this is a very important film to Nick and I, uh, something that we watched our whole lives with our dad and means so much. Jack Burton right here, Kurt Russell, a person who I am firmly in love with. Uh, Jack Burton is, for my money, probably the best individual character that's ever been created. Uh, he's hilarious. This is a dude that growing up, I thought Jack Burton was like this badass and just unstoppable dude. And then I started growing up and you start to realize, you know, more about films, the subtleties. And you realize like, oh no, Jack Burton is not badass. He's an idiot. He's not good at anything, but he has all the swagger and confidence of like the most capable dude ever. And that's such a funny, funny pairing of someone who just like swaggers around, but has no skills to back it up at all. Um, my favorite character of all time, Jack Burton. Uh, and it has fueled a lifelong love of Kurt Russell. Um, and I'm firmly okay with that. Uh, so this game is great because it's just a theme that we super enjoy and, and within the same system of a game we super enjoy. So yeah, this was an instant buy. We'll throw down every so often and we just love that I can play as the Pork Chop Express because why not? They had to fill out the game somehow. Um, and that is Big Trouble in Little China Legendary. This last game is based on... We're talking about a lot of favorites today. It's pretty cool. This is based on my favorite... Literary character of all time. <laughs> so Jack Braid's probably my favorite <laughs> on-screen character. Uh, Harry Dresden, Wizard for Hire, uh, is my favorite literary character. Um, he's from the Dresden Files, is the, the book series by Jim Butcher. That is absolutely amazing. Um, is my favorite book series of all time. And it follows the 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 tales and trials and tribulations of Harry Dresden, who is a modern day wizard living in Chicago. His life is terrible. He's super poor. Obviously people don't believe that he's a real wizard and he's a private investigator. And through 15 books at the time of this recording, uh, all sorts of crazy stuff has happened. The books have evolved. The, the storylines, the characters have evolved in such an amazing way. And the entire time uh, you're in Harry's head, it's a first person narrative from uh, Harry and it's just he's such a cool interesting character I love it so much and so obviously we're like uh, hell yeah we're gonna get this uh, cooperative card game based on the Dresden Files freaking love it and it uses the fate system down here which I'd go into more about but I I don't know more than that the fate system something that D&D &D folks do and stuff and I, you know I'm here because I'm entertaining and generally funny, not because I like know a uh, wicked ton about board games. That's Nick's department. Uh, but he uses the face system. Basically, you have a certain amount of action points and the better things use more action points and you got to balance, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you go through kind of books and scenarios uh, that are based on the books. And if you're a fan of the series, they're really oh, you're like, oh, I remember that part. I remember that part. This game, um, like any kind of deck builder co-op game it's basically a puzzle you're solving a puzzle and very much uh that's the feel of this game is the solving of the puzzle we bought this in chicago by the way which is very fitting because Dresden files takes place in chicago um this game these two rows right here are kind of all the bad stuff you have to overcome this game feels very dependent on the shuffle and how these cards come out and in what order they come out and there's some wiggle room where it's like, you can overcome this. There's like a threshold of success between here and here, but it's like, if you go over here, it's too easy. If you go over here, like there's just no way to do it. And that's the only frustrating thing about this game is that the shuffle can just like make or break you. And I want the shuffle to make things harder or easier, but I always want to feel like I have a shot and we don't always feel that way. So if we get a super bad shuffle, sometimes we'll play around 
and we're like, no way, we'll just reshuffle and start again because it's just going to be too crazy. Um, that's my only thing that, that holds this game back from greatness. Um, also, I feel like if you're not a fan of the Dresden Files, this game won't have a whole lot for you just because you can play as all these characters and all these, there's all these like little flavory things, but like you have to have read the books to really get it. And I don't mind that th there's a game like that just as a, you know, FYI out there for folks. Uh, if you like the Dresden Files, do check it out. If you don't like the Dresden Files, never heard of the Dresden Files, uh, change it and read that shit because it's freaking amazing and then play this game. Uh, but maybe wait until after you've read at least the first eight or 10 books the, you know, that this game would cover uh, first so you can really savor the flavor. Uh, anyway, that is this section of the shelf, folks. Thank you so much for sticking in with me. Hope you're having a lovely Friday. Um, hope you're all seeing Deadpool or doing whatever Friday stuff people do out there. Uh, and we'll see you on another section of the shelf very soon. And uh, do check out Best of the Week, which always comes out on Fridays. So uh, you can always check that out. And we will see you guys next time. Before I go, real quick, if you want to play any of these things live on Twitch, let us know on Twitter and stuff, and we'll stream them for you at twitch.tv slash the Bose Murph seamless plug at the end. Professional as hell, dab on it. Later, guys. Keep on Murphing on. Such a cool video, right? I was, man, there was jokes, and I know what happened in this one for sure. So because of that, check out Restoration Games. They sponsor us, and there's info for them in the description below. There's also more things where I'm doing funny stuff. Sometimes Nick is funny because I've seen all these.